you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite. The high. housing market is getting absolutely destroyed, and today we're going to go over Redfin's weekly housing market update. I'm going to pull up a couple metro areas as well that have less value than they did in January of 2020. So there are some metro areas that have erased any gains that they got during the massive equity run-up so not only will i do that i'm also going to show you guys the differences when reviewing redfin data compared to what it looks like when you actually review MLS data. And I believe, and you guys hear me preach about this all the time, I believe that the public needs access to the MLS. And specifically, the reason is so that the public can see and review comparable sales and not just the title company. I know some states, the title company records that information and you can get a lot of information from title companies. But more importantly, we also want to see the details of transaction. What was it listed, the days on the market, seller's concessions and things like that, that title companies don't report. So overall, you guys, I have a very wonderful video set up for y'all today. And before I continue, understand real estate mindset is a community and I'm just one person in that community. And I want you guys to do me a favor if you are listening to this video. If you were in the housing market purchasing or just trying to invest or just trying to look, during 2023 and currently, please share with us your experiences as far as dealing with realtors, sellers, buyers, whoever you are, whatever you went through, whether it was good or whether it was bad, please comment below because one thing y'all should be learning and what you'll see in this video when I compare Redfin to MLS, it's a much different picture when you're actually on the ground experiencing this process. So in other words, y'all, if it's me, I'm keeping my guard up. I'm using the data to find the deal. I am not using my emotions and I am desperately, desperately trying to find a great realtor that can provide me with data analyzing. And remember, it's always about subdivision unless it's rural property. You gotta look at the subject properties subdivision 95% of the time. So please comment below. And if you find value in these reports, if you like what I'm doing here, please hit like on the video, share the video, hit notifications, and please, Enjoy the video. So let's start at the beginning of this article from Redfin titled Housing Market Update. New listings post biggest uptick in nearly three years, but buyers show restraint as rates rise. So is this the beginning of the end as far as the golden handcuff effect? Is the QT and the unaffordability so unbearable that now people are going to start selling their houses because they're incentivized to do so. That has been the argument from so many bulls and I've been listening to it. It's been justifiable. I understand what they're saying. But the thing is, you guys, especially if we go into a recession or if we have unemployment, there will be more and more incentives for the homeowners of existing homes that purchased prior to 2022 that have over $100,000 in equity, probably a three, four or 5% interest rate. There's going to be incentive for them to sell. In fact, I am actually one of those people with a 2.5 interest rate. Yes, I'm renting as well, but I also own property. And the thing is, guys, is I'm going to sell this spring. At least I'm going to try to. So my question is, is how many other people are going to be doing the same thing as me and how much inventory will that start bringing into the market? Because the trends are now showing that inventory is increasing faster than demand, which is good. So, so long as demand kind of stays at the level it's at now, it's only a matter of time before the propping up of the housing market stops and price discovery starts. And remember, this is very important you understand me and you'll learn this in this video. The price discovery or correction or crash is going to drastically differ depending on the state, metro and subdivision that you are interested in purchasing. So the best thing that you can do more than likely is understand the markets that you want to purchase real estate in. A few paragraphs before we really hit the data. This is what they're saying. More sellers are listing their homes, but 7% mortgage rates and still high home prices are pushing down sales. So we got both things that we want. We want less demand and we want more inventory because that will obviously put more and more pressure on prices to go down. We know prices are going down because what is happening right now is not sustainable. The housing market over the last three years has been built on money printing and has been built on a house of cards that is going to fall. The question is how greatly 
will it fall? And in what metro areas will it be worst? And what metro areas will be safe, if any? This goes on. New listings of U.S. homes for sale rose 13% year over year. So new listings are up year over year. That means the trajectory of inventory growth is exceeding last year. That's really, really good, you guys. Now, again, that's rose 13% year over year. That is the biggest increase in nearly three years. The total inventory, which means all inventory, is also improving. Active listings are flat, however, from a year ago, making the first time in nine months, the total number of homes for sale hasn't declined. Very, very important that we have inventory growth. That's welcome news for home buyers who have been battling the dual challenges of low inventory and high mortgage rates for over a year. And I would also say battling an industry that's full of toxicity, fraud, corruption, and greed, which is the National Association of Realtors. That's just my opinion. Just my opinion, keep in mind. Oh, well, I mean, it's also some other people's opinions like the Department of Justice, but we won't go there. But while today's buyers have a few more homes to choose from, they're still facing historically high housing costs. The typical home buyer's mortgage payment is almost $2,700. That's only $47 shy of last October's record high. That's right, you guys. We are only in March and the housing market is almost as unaffordable as it was during the peak of when interest rates were in the 8%. More unaffordable. Demand is lower. Inventory is shooting up. It's only a matter of time before that hits prices. Let's keep going. Now, this is Redfin's like last little paragraph before we go into the data. From agents, it's, it's really usually like really crazy optimistic. Let's see what they have to say this week. House hunters are out there and competition picks up every time mortgage rates decline a bit. A Red from Premier agent in Washington is saying, I'm telling buyers who can afford it to look now while they have more breathing room and less competition. And that is a fear of missing out statement. Look now before everyone comes back. Look right now, right now. They're not saying credit income assets, use data, check your emotions. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. And if they did say that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would trust them more. Would you guys trust them more? Comment below. If they were more cautious, would you trust them more? They have a good chance of negotiating the price down and getting some concessions from the seller, which could make up for getting a 7% mortgage rate instead of a 6% mortgage rate. All right, moving on to this week's leading indicators. Okay. So again, we're going to look at year over year and we'll look at what they have for the current report here. So they're saying the daily interest rates back in the 7%. So that's really, really fantastic news. If you want balance back in the house market, if you're already a homeowner, you probably don't care. But if you are on the sidelines, we want higher rates right now to stop demand so that the housing market can rebalance, come back to fundamentals. That's why we are encouraging high interest rates. Stop buying houses, America, and let the market bust. Anyways, guys, so 7.15% on a weekly, on the daily, slightly below 7%. That's very strange, sitting at 6.9%. But again, that's up from 6.5% in the previous year. And year over year, as far as the daily average, is up from 6.78%. That is huge, you guys. That is very, very important that we have a more restricting housing market than last year. And we see that in the sales and transaction data, which is stage two of the whole cycle. So first stage rates, the second stage is transactions and new construction. So mortgage purchase applications is down 5% from last week and it was already in the gutter. It was already in the gutter, it's just more in the gutter now. So literally any increase in mortgage applications, it may look like it was a substantial increase because it is so low right now. In fact, it's down 12% year over year. And this time last year, we had bank runs for the first time since the Great Depression. I believe that's the first time since the Great Depression we'd have bank runs. Maybe we had bank runs before that, but we definitely had the second, third, and fourth biggest bank failure in history happen around this time last year. So demand is even worse than that. What does that tell you about the housing market? It probably tells you that American home buyers are starting to wake up to the idea that, hey, maybe it's okay to wait. And maybe waiting is the best thing to do right now, which is rare. Normally we can say it's overall probably shouldn't wait if you have credit, income, assets, you have a property understanding, right? But right now is one of those rare times where it's like, I don't care what data you're looking at. When we look at affordability, when we look at prices, when we look at things like that, we look at history, look at the yield curve inversion, look at deficit government spending. It's a bad time to buy right now, in my opinion. 
you may have a different one and that's fine. Now here we go with Redfin home buying demand. You guys can see home buying demand is also down 9% year over year, but it is up apparently 8% from a week earlier. That could be an indication that people are looking at houses, not necessarily buying houses. Because again, when we look at year over year, it's down somehow even worse than last year, 9%. Same thing with people looking on the internet, guys, for Google Homes for searches, down 8%. However, that's up 7% from a month earlier. They, they'll use whatever they use, week or month. They keep changing this box, but that's okay. We really want to look for right now for this video. We want to look at year over year as well. Now, touring activity at the same time last year, it was up 14%. I'm not even sure what that means, but this is up 12% from the start of the year. So again, that's not month over month or week over week. They're not really telling us, but it does sound bad. It, touring activity does sound like it's low. Now take a look at this real quick, guys. Here's pending sales and here's new listings. Two data trends I wanna show you if you wanna pay attention to the laws of supply and demand. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I've heard many debates. I like the debates on the housing market and a lot of it is about inventory. A lot of it is about incentivizing uh, homeowners to sell. But one thing that I, I constantly tell people that's stronger than the laws of supply and demand is emotion, is sentiment. So regardless of these numbers, when Americans like wake up, like and that sentiment is like, now we don't wanna touch a house, the whole thing crashes. It doesn't even matter where we're at with the laws of supply and demand. And that goes both ways. They will drive prices up and they will crash prices, but pending sales are down 7.7% year over year and new listings are up 12.9% year over year. So we have the laws of demand playing out in exactly the way we want it. Demand going down, inventory going up. Okay, now take a look at this, y'all. This is the winners and this is the losers. And I have a lot to talk about on this part of the video. I hope to blow your minds away. And the reality is we really can't use Redfin to properly tell us what's going on in the housing market. And also the reality is, is there's no blanket statement we can make. We can't, as of right now, we can't say the housing market has rebounded. We can't make a blanket statement like that. And I'm going to show you why. And we also can't say, oh, the whole housing market has crashed because not all housing markets have done that. In fact, most housing markets in 2023 did rebound. There are less metros that have price decline in 2023 than 2022. Now, people call that, I've called that a dead cat bounce. It could be kind of looked at like a bull trap. I believe that's what's going to happen. Other people believe it will sustain and prices will continue to go up. I just don't see that happening. I don't even see it in the data, especially when we look at only new homes. But what we're going to emphasize today, again, we're not even going to go into new homes. We're looking at existing homes. So let's go back to the winners and losers. Now, starting with the winners column, look at this, guys. Here's Newark. Is that how you pronounce that? Newark? At this point, it's kind of a game to me. You guys know that I'm with the slow reading group but I'm good in math and I'm good at empathy. So 15.5% increase year over year. Now, number two is San Diego, West Coast, San Diego, California, sitting at growth of 15.3. They have almost no new home inventory. They do have new home building, but they don't have a lot and they have a lot of zoning issues. Now, also Montgomery County PA is up 14.5% year over year. Pittsburgh, 13.9 and Anaheim sitting at 13.5. Now, I believe a lot of these are on here because of the lack of inventory specifically and they don't have net migration whereas like places like san francisco have net migration and that is killing them now the losers this week look at this guys austin's off the, off the chart now austin's hurting austin's hurting bad as, as are many other metro areas but they are only reporting two i can pull up 15 to 20 right now using their own data, but they're only covering the largest metro areas here. So understand that there are a lot more metros with your over your price decline. I will show you that here in a second, but we'll keep our eyes on Detroit. Let me show you guys something else that I kind of want to keep our eyes on. I want to keep our eyes on markets where inventory is flourishing, specifically in Florida metros. I'm very curious. Now look at Dallas, you guys. Dallas is leading, but is not on the year over year price decline list as of right now, but that is a massive surge in Dallas. I attribute that possibly to the STR ban. Remember, they will start enforcement apparently in Dallas in June of this year if you have an STR, Airbnb, VRBO in Dallas. So that's probably partially why we see that massive inventory increase as well as Jacksonville, Florida, 
Okay, so Florida's making moves. Austin's just getting beat up, y'all. Fort Worth, Texas, right next to Dallas, 29.8%. I think Dallas and Fort Worth are in for a beating this year. Time will tell. Now, Miami, one of the leading metros, is also one of the leading metros in inventory growth. So it's going to be interesting to see any type of price discovery start happening in Miami. And that's probably really good news if you're a local or native that's completely priced out. Now, real quick, you guys, I want you to understand that overall, Okay, again, no blanket statements can be given in the housing market. I personally did not think 2023 was going to rebound like it did. I was wrong about that. 2023 on a national average rebounded year over year about 4%. So not a lot, but it still rebounded and that blows my mind because these prices are so unaffordable. The housing market right now, y'all, is so confusing. Again, you can't hang on any one narrative so far. And the reason is, is because the story is still being told. But I do want to point out that there are right now a handful, only a few metro areas that have already lost all of the value accumulation during the lockdowns. Again, there are all already a handful of metro areas that have lost all of the come up during COVID, starting with San Francisco. And this is one of the reasons why you have to be so careful reading the data. Because on one hand, and this is accurate, Redfin had San Francisco up 7.6% year over year. So time to, you know, celebrate, right? Wrong. Because that's not the whole picture. What you're looking at here is a five-year view of home values in San Francisco. And I want to go all the way back to January of 2020. And you see right under my picture in January of 2020, Okay, prior to the lockdowns, the average median sales price, I'm sorry, the median sales price in San Francisco was $1.317 million. Homes were more expensive four years ago by about $7,000 in San Francisco. You guys, that means that all of these gains right here that, that San Francisco got are now evaporated. And then the thing is, is it would be much worse, but look at this tick up from December to January. That was a massive tick up immediate. But if you wanna go even deeper, look at the prices in December of 2023 in San Francisco. You can see again, under my screen, the prices were 1.19 million in December of 2023. You guys, I have to go all the way back to January of 2019. Okay. We have to go back over four years to get values where they were that low. January of 2019, values in San Francisco were 1.2 million. San Francisco is going through some stuff right now. Now you may say, oh, no, it's just seasonal. That's fine. But it's not fine if you purchased at the peak for 1.6 million and now your home is upside down 300 to $400,000. Is it? And that's not all. Also, we have Birmingham, Alabama that is in the same situation, you guys. Pretty massive drop from December to January. Median sales price sitting, let me put it right under my picture right there. Median sales price is sitting at 160000 Again, we go all the way back to January of 2020. Median sales price under my screen was $162,200, which means all of these gains right here that they had are now wiped away for this month. They have a lower price point than they did January of 2020. And look at this, guys. If we look at the low right here, the low was October of 2023, sitting at 145000 okay? So we have to go all the way back to February of 2019 to find a time where that price point was that low. Now, what's interesting is, is we had a low here in December of 2021 that actually beat a low in February of 2019. So again, what I'm saying is it's very important to look at the whole picture. There's a drop down right here. Some people are fanatics about this. I like to look at the whole picture because that's what most consumers do. So I like to be realistic and, you know, not like co-mingle my emotion and opinions in this. So let's just look at all the data and we'll interpret it. Now look at this Metro. If you're from Houston, Texas, you know that this is one of the leading housing markets in Houston, the Woodlands, Texas. This is so nice. This is actually the first place that I moved to when I first got to Houston. I absolutely love the Woodlands, but look at the year over year. Look at that T down 21.5%. And the thing is, guys, is, is that's not telling you the full picture, though. But nevertheless, you guys, it is down 21.5%. Now, personally, I attribute this to, obviously, the bubble starting to pop. This is a more expensive area. You can kind of see the run-up is still there. But that is a, <laughs> that's a pretty shocking low 
for the Woodlands. But again, what I'm saying is you got to look more into the situation. Redfin is not going to give you the data that you need to make an informed decision. One of the only ways you can get that is, again, is accessing MLS data. Now, what I want to do is, is I want to make this point. I want to show you Redfin as far as what it looks like for Kingwood. Remember, you guys, if you've been following my channel for the last year, year and a half, you know that I've been keeping us in that Kingwood housing market box because it is a very small housing market and therefore it can't really I can't really manipulate that. We're going to see trends that are happening across the nations happen in Kingwood. So let me show you what Redfin is showing that Kingwood looks like. And then let me show you what MLS is showing. All right. So according to Redfin, here's what Kingwood, Texas looked like. Okay. So Kingwood is up 6.6% according to Redfin. Now it didn't really hit another high right here. So it kind of bounced off of that, uh, you know, from the 2020 highs, but you can't really tell much. It's just like, oh my gosh, Kingwood, it looks great, right? Wrong. It's not great. You can find great deals. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the MLS map, okay, of Houston. And Houston has a whole, obviously a whole bunch of cities. And obviously, guys, I have to zoom in to the metro areas that I want to review. So Kingwood is actually up here. And you see there's about 200 listings in Kingwood. But what that, you know, what that stuff is not going to show you is it's not going to show you substantial price cuts and then accurate DOM. For example, if I click this listing in Kingwood, take a look at this, guys. Let me show you this. This is insane. Massive price cut right here. We had a $75,000 price cut. This home has been on the market for 151 days. There's probably $60,000 in wedge. You may think like, how is that when you're always saying under $122 a square foot? The reason that is, is this also has a pool. Can you believe that? Oh my God, this has a pool. This, I don't, look at how nice it is. I don't know. I can't tell you why this house has been on the market for half a year. It's crazy to me that this is still even on the market. Let me show you another listing. Take a look at this one right here. If you watch my morning lives, you probably have seen this. This is a foreclosure. This is all in Kingwood. Redfin is not showing us this. This is a foreclosure. Okay, take a look at right here. Even if the bank was like, we can't sell this foreclosure. We're going to price cut. You guys, this is for sale for $104 a square foot. No one is buying this. This is in Kingwood. Look at the condition. The condition of this foreclosure looks immaculate. I, you know, if Assuming these are the real pictures, maybe they're not the real pictures, but OMG. And that's not all. Right next to this foreclosure right here, you guys, is another house that's just sitting there. And look at what it is, price per square foot. $107 a square foot. It looks like they relisted this. I'm not sure. Uh, but the thing is, guys, $107 a square foot. I mean, this is dirt cheap. Massive wedge in these houses. Look at the condition. They're not buying it. And another thing that I like that MLS shows us is it shows us the archive. So this will show us like what they're listing the house for, how long it's been on the market, kind of the tricks that are being played. And I really love using this, especially when it comes to new homes. Because I tell you guys this all the time. There is a lack of consumer protection when it comes to purchasing new home. So you got to, you got to really watch out for that. Now let's get into some of the data visualization. And I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know this is a little bit longer of a video, but I wanted to give you guys a comprehensive breakdown of the market. Now I have another question for you guys. Okay. Now, first of all, median sales price is up 5.4% year over year. Okay. Year over year represents that. Okay. Now some people don't understand this, but this graph is a week over week graph, but it will also allow you to compare year over year over year over year. Now I have a question for you guys. What trajectory do you think we're going to hit in 2024? Do you think we're going to hit a new high or do you think that values are going to be year over year decline overall? Because if we're to have equity growth, home values are going to kind of have to go like this. And I'm kind of like, well, oh my God, like, are there really that many, you know, foolish, well-qualified buyers out there or that must buy a house? I don't know. I didn't think there were that many last year, but there was. So I'm interested. Do you think it's going to go that tra trajectory? Do you think it's going to be maybe more a balanced trajectory where we start hitting kind of year over year price decline when we're in maybe April, May, June area when they're supposed to go up. So let me know what you think, you guys. Either it's kind of going to go sideways, we'll start hitting year over year decline again during April, May, June, or do you think it's going to continue the trend and go up during spring and summer, followed by a slight decline going into the year? Very interested to know what you think is going to happen going into 2024, which again is an election year. Now, when it comes to median asking price, this has hit a brick wall. It's actually very intriguing seeing this pattern here. You can kind of see how that is plateaued, probably as a result of two things, sellers realizing they can't just 
make up a sales price and buyers starting to be completely squeezed out of the market. I mean, there's, there's a cap to this, right? There's only so high things can go before people are like, nah, I'm not interested in that toxic asset. Maybe in 2020, maybe in 2023, I'd be interested in a toxic asset. But y'all, it's 2024 now. We know this is toxic. We're not going to buy. I hope that's what they're saying. <laughs> I don't know. I hope they are. Now take a look at this, guys. This is a big one right here. This is home buying housing payments that is up week over week. We're now sitting, and I read this to you guys, we're sitting at $2,671. But notice as well, that's at a 6.9% interest rate. So interest rates are higher right now, which means we may be at a new peak. So when this comes out next week, if they price in the higher interest rates, we may be at a new peak high for unaffordability as far as mortgage payments. That last peak was around October of 2023. And I believe as we read, we're within $100 of that peak. So it's gonna be interesting as we move forward, are we gonna hit another record of unaffordability? And will that be enough to curve enough demand so that we do have inventory growth? Only time will tell. Here's another indicator of demand. Demand is down, you guys. Here's pending sales. That's down 8% year over year. That's a four year low for this time of month. You can see it's way down right there. So demand is low. Demand is getting crushed, but there are still people purchasing. Also another really good data set. This is new listings of homes. We are up 13%. Yes. This is exactly what we want. So we are up 13% year over year, but we are down when we look at 2022, when we look at 2021, they were up here and we're right there. This is what I'm trying to say is yes, we have inventory growth, but we need that to sustain. It did not sustain last year. And that was one of the problems. If it would have sustained, we would have been in a much different situation. So hopefully what I'm specifically saying is, is yes, all this growth, right? but we need that growth to sustain. Now here's beautiful, okay? Now all of this is like, comes to like active listings, like the total number of listings were dead even last year. So hopefully, and see, we're way up here. So if we go up a little bit, we will have a four year high. So again, we need what, a thousand more active listings and we'll be potentially at a four year high. So the trajectory is going up. This is good. This is what we want. But what do we want next? We want prices to come down so more Americans can afford a house and the housing market is more balanced and sustainable. Here's another inventory growth right here. You guys were at 3.9 months of available supply. That's big. Now remember sustained four to five months. We need sustained buyer's market sustained six months. But the fact that it's kind of, you kind of kind of see it plateau right there, that's good. So, so far these trends are good. We don't really see it yet in the prices, but as far as conquering demand, getting back to balance, we are seeing good trends. We're seeing it break seasonality. Normally prices, like price cuts go down, like rapidly. You guys can see that it went down rapidly this year. And right here it went down, kind of went down a little bit right here. But the fact that we're plateauing, that's a good sign if you're on the sideline like I am. Another good sign, you guys, this is also breaking seasonality. This is so good. I'm telling you, this is exactly what we want to see because remember the sediment is very, very powerful. You guys, price drops are still surging. Normally, when we're close to spring home buying season, the price cuts go down. You see that right here, they went down. You see that right here, they went down. And you see that right here, they went down. So over the last four years, this is when price cuts go down because buying demand comes back, right? That's why I've been saying we need high rates going into spring or we're potentially doomed and the bubble gets even bigger, collapse even stronger. But finally, finally, you guys, we are starting to see that break that normal seasonality, okay? So price cuts are still going up. It is going the opposite way that it normally does. That's great. But again, we need it to sustain this way. And last but not least, here's Redfin Home Buying Demand Index. That is down a massive whopping 9% year over year. In fact, we again are at a 4 year low for this time of year. So again, from the laws of supply and demand, we're doing good. The question is also how will we continue to incentivize homeowners that do have that golden handcuff effect at two and 3%. And I'm going to be honest, guys, everyone knows that Americans move. We are a moving people. We travel. We like to explore. We don't like to be chained to our house overall. So again, there's only a matter of time before the golden handcuffs continues to deteriorate. And the fact that prices are so elevated because there's a lack of supply. Remember, we only had about 350,000 units, active units during the low of inventory. We have double that right now. 
So things are changing, and that's why I still think patience is great. Don't just get stuck on the sideline waiting for some crash. Don't get stuck on the sideline, sold on some narrative. Empower yourself. And you guys, if you need help, I made a home buying course for you. I explain, based on my over 20 years of experience, how to increase your purchasing power, how to keep yourself safe. You guys, it's less than two hours. Take the course. It's in my description. I made that for you. So you can come to real estate mindset. And if you want empowerment, if you want growth, if you want community that cares about each other, that's what you get. Now, other than that, I really hope you guys gain some value, insights, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.